Welcome. This is Documentation Office Hours. It's the 25th of May, 2023. Uh, topics for today, the international and, na, internationalization and localization pull request from J.E. Chen, the upgrade guide that's for the release coming next week, Kevin Martin's unavailable, and oh, we need to change this one. Instead of April newsletter is published, May newsletter needs the writing or something. submissions. Yeah. Yep. Right. And then other topics, stocks transition, GSOC, I think we may have nothing to discuss there, but we'll test it. Uh, let's, but I think GSOC is a good topic. And then the pipeline steps reference just remains as a reminder, end of life and end of life are just reminders. Anything else, okay. Bruno, that you want to add? Uh, maybe, but we could keep it for another meeting. I was thinking of discussing update CLI for Jenkins IO. Oh, oh, very good. Okay, update CLI on Jenkins.io. So for documentation content. Yes, indeed. Because um, yes, we'll see when we'll address the point. Should good. We All right. Well, so let's put it. I want to put it high on the list because I think it's a, an interesting topic. Good. All right. Anything else you want to add to the agenda? No, thank you, Mark. Okay. So first topic then, internationalization and localization pull request from J.E. Chen. So this pull request has a long history. What, what this submitter has done is picked up a pull request that we had, had initially started some from by somebody else, but it stalled out because it just didn't get didn't get attention from the submitter and didn't get attention from us and they went away but this person has retrieved it again and said hey let's try it so so what this does is it provides us an update i wanted to show this preview mm -hmm. site of the pull request okay so what this is the internationalization and localization top level section in the developer documentation notice it says it's a work in progress yep what it did was added a new section in there called internationalization and localization with details of what are the tasks that developers perform and what are the tasks that uh, translators perform however this the sections that it's adding like generation of message classes and making mess marking messages in jelly files are already covered in other places like internationalizing messages in java source code and in jelly views and in groovy views even so so i think we've already got the content and this content, because it was copied from the old Jenkins wiki, wiki is actually worse than the oh. than the new content <laughs> that's on the site. So it 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 isn't as current, right? It, I think the the thing it, that's been retrieved is a good step, but it's not as current as this description is. Mm. So so that was one of my all right. But there are things in this page that are absolutely not mentioned anywhere in the current documentation. For example, I learned something new by reading this. I've been doing plugin development for a little while, and yet this, pay, this section was entirely new to me. Oh. I had no idea that this command existed and that what it did and how it's helpful. So, yeah. so if I want this command to, to live in some documentation somewhere, I really do. And, and there are other things like that where there's no place that describes how you translate mm -hmm. HTML pages. So for me, I think those were good, good things to get from this pull request, but I'm not sure that we want them in the location where J.E. Chen has proposed them. Yes, and it always, uh, it's, with the same title uh, to top it up internal right right which in... which makes it sort of makes it a little unclear now there's another yeah. complication here that we've also got a tool that supports translation and oh it works well when when it's enabled crowd in supports translation very nicely right and bruno i believe you've had experience using crowd in to submit translations for strings yes i'm still using it for um 
whatever lookable resource uh, plugin yeah right right exactly and so when it's enabled for relatively few plugins they're only 12 or so but when it's enabled it's much easier on a translator than the process that we describe of edit a file create the file if you need to submit a pull request mm. etc this is this batches them together does a much better job so what i thought was what if we what if we combine the localization thing and that crowd in with a little more content for crowd in into something that looks like this so here we've got the internationalization and localization and i moved the content to the top level page yeah and that then oh go ahead yeah sorry that makes much more sense uh yeah this way now to, to be bec because the developer tasks were already described but i wanted them enumerated i yeah. thought let's put the the numbered list of this is what plugin developers have to do mm -hmm. and this one links to the java source code one this one links to the jelly views one I did not link to the groovy views one because this one, the groovy views one says, we do not encourage you to use this. Yeah, of course. And so yeah, we no do link. not encourage people I, using groovy. I'm not going to put a, like a link there <laughs> yeah. for groovy views, but there's one more enable Sweet. crowd in translation plugin support. Yeah. So it's written somewhere that uh, Crowdin only works for plugins and not for Jenkins core. We haven't yet done the the significant work required on Jenkins core to allow Crowdin to work on Jenkins core. Yeah. Yeah, and and as far as I understand it there will be significant work because Jenkins core is a multi-module Maven project and I'm not sure that Crowdin that our Crowdin integration is ready for multi-module. Yes, um, sorry if I did not make myself clear. I didn't want to put crowd in for the Jenkins core just to write it somewhere in the documentation that you can use crowd in for plugins, but do not try to ah. do something with um, Jenkins and, core. And, and there it's it's actually stated here. Oh, cool. So so I agree with you. That message, I think I think you're exactly correct. So what I said was translators can contribute to plugin localizations through crowd in after they've enabled it translators can contribute to jenkins core and plugins not registered with crowd in by filing pull requests crystal clear yeah well thank you the thought was okay let's make it clear to people that really if it's available you should use this path it's the easy path but it's only available for a small set of plugins for the the and it's not available for jenkins core for them you have to use this path do okay. you think that's okay as a as an idea of how to present it i think it's much better you know cherry picking what's interesting in the existing pull request and making something new that makes more sense uh with a menu for example it's much better yeah okay and now the next thing that i did in this in this draft idea was the crowd in oh oh i should show another thing right so internationalization and localization previously was listed as a work in progress yeah it has disappeared and and that's gone now because i feel like this is well enough described to say that it's no longer a work in progress yeah uh, there is still something that bugs me somehow is that the jenkins crowding integration is not part of internationalization and localization in the menu on the left mm -hmm. i don't know it's you know, it's a subject all by itself, but it is linked to I eighteen something or yeah. It is good point. So so we could. My reason for leaving it as a top level entry like that was that I didn't want to have to resolve broken hyperlinks that might <laughs> point to it. It. I think you're right. Ultimately, it really is. But. I guess for me, it was a marketing choice to say, hey, let's leave it top level, at least for now, in, in order to encourage more people to use it. Yeah, it will already be better than the existing documentation. So all fine. Right. So, so Bruno, I, I gather, are you generally okay with this idea? Now, let me show you some problems first before, before we say yes or no. So here's a problem. Um, this problem is that 
gener oh i spelled it wrong well, yeah, there's there was a spelling a error so yeah. fix that but here there are three segments missing content okay and i need i think i can grab those some of those i can grab some, this content from what je chan wrote this one i'm just oh. going to have to describe how they do it mm. and and it's not that hard to do it's just okay have to describe it and be sure it works the way i describe it i think it's as ma as simple as doing lc underscore all equals something fr you know <laughs> etc and maven hpi colon run but I, I have to check it to be sure i have no idea okay and for the last one uh i think there is somewhere yeah. something that we could could be paste modify and exactly we've certainly got instru well we've got instructions for this because i can just steal the same text from the from the developer um, developer guide that does the improve a plugin tutorial that was my idea yeah yeah okay good so now now to the big question are you okay with this concept I think I've got approval from Jeremy Chen from J. E. Chen to do it. Let's let's read his the comments from J. E. Chen first. Okay, so I asked the question. Hey, I submitted my ideas here. Okay. And this got a thumbs up. So I think that's an okay. And an okay thanks. So thanks. I think I'm gonna go ahead and push do a little more work on mine and then push it onto his pull request so that his pull request is a, is a bigger pull request yeah my concern was i wanted uh, the um, contributor to feel that he's part of that so if you commit to his yeah that's perfect so that well, he becomes a real contributor for jenkins also well, well and it, it correctly shows that jeffrey chen is the one who did the work Cool. Jeffrey is the one who started the started the 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 pull request, who brought it back from stalled, and and did the initial gathering. So he will be listed in the change log as the person who did it. Yeah. Cool. Great. Okay. So, so you're okay, okay with, with that. that? Of course, it's um, much better. And thanks to Jeffrey Chain to restart uh, this stale PR. Great. All right. Uh, Mark to submit to finish his additions. Push to Jeffrey's branch. Great. I will do that. Thanks. Okay, next topic, using update CLI <laughs> on Jenkins.io. Okay, so describe the problem and let's, let's so that people who lit, watch the recording have a concept of the problem. Yes, I've sent you a link into the chat if you want to visit it. Oh, good, okay. And I'm afraid it's your work. <laughs> oh, okay. <All laughs> Nothing right. wrong with that. I was just uh, feeling bad, you know, but because that kind of PR doesn't look like fun at all. And uh, I'm just a beginner user of update CLI, so I don't know much about that anymore. Um, first time being sorry. But when I saw this PR that Damien sent me, uh, Damien Duportal, I said, whoa, we may do something about that because it's not funny at all to do that kind of PR. It's boring as can be. I don't know. I've never done that, but I imagine you don't have to say, but anyhow. Mm -hmm. So I made a few tests and Unfortunately, um, for the time being, it doesn't work because, Mark, these files have changed in this PR. And now, for example, we are using uh, Blue Ocean without any version, Docker Rockflow without any version. So no need to keep them up to date with update CLI. But I found a few of the files where we are referring to um, Node.js, Alpine, Docker image, for example, and so on. So there are places where we could benefit from update CLI. So it's just an idea. I don't have um, a proof of concept to submit for the time being. I don't have the PR ready, but I'll have it ready by next week, I hope. 
and maybe we should discuss it with the community or not because I made a quick search and didn't find as many files as I had imagined beforehand. So I don't know, you're the one who does that kind of thing. Could you tell me anything about that? Um, the frequency, the amount of time or anything? Is that valuable or am I losing my time? I, I think it's it's very valuable because there are plenty of, ex of, dem of samples that use an explicit version number and that version number is inevitably out of date. Okay, this one has avoided using a version number, but what that really means is it's now doing an, a non-best -best practice, right? That was Whereas, also my point, yeah. Right, it would be much better if this called out an explicit version number for the, the Node LTS, but that it stayed on the LTS version of Node and updated periodically. That, that would really be, I think, a, a useful thing for readers, they see, Oh, the Jenkins project knows how to do versions and they don't <laughs> just use the easy out of use the an unversioned number. Let's let's yeah. make it real. Yeah. I, I like know that. I'm repeating myself a lot, but friends don't let friends use latest. Right, exactly. <laughs> and and that that example there isn't particularly calling itself latest, but it's still actually latest, right? Nonetheless. Yeah. So, so when, when it says, oh, it's LTS, well, OT, LTS is really great, but LTS is just another way of saying latest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, I think it's a great idea. Um, it's not mine. Uh, it's Damien's idea, but I'd be glad to start something about that. Yeah. Great. Uh, and I think, I think that I can see nothing but positive from that. Well, good to know. I, I was not sure about that. Thank you. Great. Anything else? No, Mark. Thanks. Um, for me, there's another benefit hiding there. When we have version documentation, which we will someday, mm -hmm. right? Because Google Summer of Code's working on it. Um, the old versions will show the tool version that was used at that time. Mm, interesting. So yeah. so there's some benefit to there that for me it's oh okay when when Jenkins 2.332.1 released we were using Node.js this thing in our demonstrations. Why not? That's great. Good. All right. Anything else on the topic? No, thank you, Mark. Okay, next topic then is I'm behind schedule on doing the changelog and upgrade guide and uh, Mark complete it. It's not a hard task. It's just got to be done and it, it takes an hour or two to do the extraction, the review, etc. cetera. Uh, Bruno, I'll, I'll ask for your help. Of um, course. Would you be willing to review it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Great, all right. And what I'll probably do is if I haven't finished it before Docs Office Hours Asia, I'll use Docs Office Hours Asia time to do it because then I've got Meg McRoberts and Chris Stern who may both be willing to assist. Okay. All right. Anything else on, on the change log and upgrade guide? Mm, no, thank you. Okay. Kevin Martin's unavailable until june 12 he'd shared with the the jenkins governance board that he's out we're going to delay the java 11 to java 17 documentation transition while he's out uh, that's not that harmful because debian 12 release is in june sometime mm -hmm. yeah and i think it's likely late june oh, i think so yes and the date is not really precise uh right last time i read yeah so so therefore we're not we're not at big risk right now when debian 12 releases there will be some people who will use it and they'll be frustrated that the jenkins instructions don't tell them to use java 17 but small group compared to the total set of jenkins yeah, users of course all right then let's see what else oh next topic main newsletter that's just a reminder 
Um, as a board member, I need to do some. Bruno, you're still going to create the yeah. pull request, right? So, yeah. great. All right. Let's see. And this one. Oh, Google Summer of Code. Anything you want to report there? So, so you're working the Docker Quick Start project with Ashutosh. Yeah, and we're still in the bonding period for, for the time being because people, uh, contributors are uh, working on the bio, the first blog post, uh, the project description page, and so on. Um, so we are progressing slowly. We had um, GSOC office hours earlier today, uh, mm. that went fine. No blogger, whatever. So everything is progressing. Some groups have already started coding. I know it's very frustrating doing only. Uh, ASCII doc and you want to put some code so some of them have started and it's doing it's going well so nothing bad to share <laughs> great all right good and let's see so anything else on google summer of code no no all is going well okay pipeline steps reference damage no progress there and no change expected end of life notifications at the pull request is no longer draft. The pull request has now been uh, approved, uh, and approved. we are in the twenty-four hour clock oh, pending. So, it's, so oh, it's already it's at the point where we can merge it. So we're going to merge it now. Cool. Because hey, it's got four approvals. Two of them are core maintainers, and I've got. Uh, from, yeah, it's me. From, Sorry. <laughs> thank you. Very good. All right. So I'm going to do, as said, it was stated yesterday that we would merge in 24 hours. The 24 hour clock is done. I'm going to oh, squash and merge. Do it live. Yes. Absolutely. Woohoo. Okay. So, and now if we go look at the, so this was just so everyone's aware of how, how huge it was. This was a hundred over a hundred commits that got squashed to a single commit. Wow. And that's a good thing because there was a bunch of junk in those commits. Oh, come so on. it was, I was learning while I was doing that and the learning was a lot of fun, but, but I certainly don't need to expose my learning to. So here is the single commit with all of the notes on well, the many different <laughs> things that were that's done. That's impressive. Well, shame on me, but that hey. will do a nice change log for next week release, I guess. Well, it's it's got a one line change log. The change log entry is is very simple. Yeah, yeah. If I didn't format the change log correctly, we'll fix that too. So good, that's done. Can't wait All to right. have my CentOS seven displaying something. Just kidding, I don't have any CentOS seven <laughs> running. Friends right. don't let friends run CentOS seven. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Okay. So um on this one, this is now merged. So users who are running CentOS 7 or Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 on the weekly will get a notice beginning next Tuesday. Uh on if they upgrade to the new version. Uh the next next LTS baseline will include the change. Mm -hmm. So that would be roughly August. And it's 2.400, probably say 413 or 412. Great. Okay. Anything else, Bruno? No, I just can't wait seeing messages on the mailing list or on Community Jenkins IO saying, hey, what is this message about? <laughs> It'll be yeah, fun. That's, we'll see that. Well, and, and and we'll hope that hope that people understand it and we can make it the message clear, etc. Yeah. All right. Thanks for your time. Any other topics for today? No, thank you, Mark. All right. Bye. Wow.